when you put your vise on your milling table, it's quite a pain because you always have to dial it in straight. However, there's a better way. Most vices have key slots on the bottom, and Luke gave me a pair of these precision ground keys, so let's fit them. Yeah, g'day, heathers and gentlemen. I was working quite a bit on my Shelblin this week, mainly in some of the wiring, but there was not enough progress to really make a video out of it. So I thought I'd jump onto one of those five minute jobs. That would make my life a lot easier once it's done. By the way, after this video, my next Patreon and members live stream. So if you're interested, come and join me. I'd estimate it takes me about 15 minutes to tram in the vise every time I use it. So setting it up with alignment keys is gonna save me a lot of time in the long term. This mill's got 14 millimeter T-slots. And wow, the keys which Luke gave me are spot on. These slots are gonna to need to be widened slightly and the holes drilled and tapped. I'll also need to check the alignment because it may well be that the slots currently don't align properly. But before we do any of this, let's just see if this actually sits flat. Definitely a burr in here somewhere. Water it down with some VD30. Here I'm just hinging the casting. The pivot point should be about a third the way along. Well, it's not terrible, but it's not good. So let's flatten it a bit. Time for my trusty Coborn scraper. Right, now I need a couple of stop blocks. So when I'm scraping, I've got something to push against. Right, first pass, I'm just gonna break up the surface. I'm going to need a longer stroke than that. So to adjust the stroke, I just need to turn this big slotted screw in there. Oh, it's a bit tight. If you're curious about this beautiful old Coborn Type 1 scraper, of which this is the 1817th ever made, it was one of my first ever videos. I'll leave a link up in the corner. I need another stop block because it's walking out. As you can probably tell, I haven't done any of this for ages, so my timing and spacing is terrible. Someone pointed out in one of the previous videos that really you need a set of three of these precision ground stones. As long as you constantly mix them up, you'd then be keeping them perfectly flat. So with that surface broken up, we can start reading its print. At the start you want pretty thick ink and a pretty heavy print. So that was one pass. And from here on in, just keep doing that and hitting the blue bits. After five passes, it's time to hone that uh, cutting tip. 
For honing, I've got this very fine diamond paste, which came from Ukraine. You don't need much. Put a little on that uh, cast iron honing plate. Having that built-in hone is one of the major cool things about this machine. Because it's so easy, you hone far more often and therefore the whole thing stays sharper and cuts easier. Well, after 11 passes, I've got a result now I can live with. It's maybe a little bit light through these two areas, but it's only a static interface, so I'll leave it at that. I'll just tidy this mess up before I machine that base. I probably should have checked this before, but I wonder how much I actually need to widen those slots out. Just using a caliper, those slots are also pretty near spot on as well, within the accuracy of a caliper of course. Maybe I've just got a slight burr problem and don't need to machine anything here, or more likely I've got a small burr problem and I need to machine something because these slots are maybe not even aligned. Before I start machining I think I'll just clean out the slots a little. Make sure it's not a burr anywhere. Let me get my gauge blocks. So those two come out to 13.95. Yeah, they fit quite nicely there. So it would appear that I've got about five one hundredths of a millimeter to take out. But before I start machining, let's set it up and see whether this is actually parallel to the jaw. To do that check, I'll just grip the two key stones. So now when I flip it, It's accurately aligned into the slots. Man, those keystones are like gauge blocks. It's like absolutely no movement there, other than tilting it forward to back. Okay, with the whole thing strapped down nice and securely, and gauge blocks filling out each of the slots, let's see whether they're parallel. Got about eighteen thousandth of an inch in this direction relative to the other one. So that's about two one hundredth of a millimeter. Since I have to widen the slot by five one hundredths of a millimeter, if I'm careful with my touch off, I should be able to fix that. I'm going to need to really sneak up on this. So I wasn't quite cutting air there, but I don't think I've cut the sides at all. Most of what we saw there was just me polishing off the, a tenth off the bottom, checking with the key. And sure enough, I took nothing off the sides. This is a simple handwritten toolpath where I only need to change two dimensions, this Y dimension and this Y dimension. And I'm just gonna sneak up on that like 
initially a couple of hundredths at a time until I get, get a first touch off. And then I've got one one hundredth to go on either side. Okay, I think that pass might have actually started cleaning up the back wall here. But I think that's the only wall it was cutting. We're still undersized, that's good. Okay, it's now starting to go in. I'll do that again, but with another one one hundredth off. Now at this point, it goes in beautifully at the back. But on this side, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. And since that last cut was on the back, I think I just need to do just a little bit more off this face here. Yep, that was it. So I just need to run that toolpath one more time to take that little burr off the middle. Let's check this out. Right, how does that look? Right, let's clamp this down whether any of this actually worked. Okay, now here's the big question. Does it work? All right. That's pretty much spot on. Well, there we have it. That's gonna speed up my setup time dramatically. It looks like this all went nice and smoothly, but if you stay for the blooper roll at the end, you'll see I actually misread a reading and went off down a wild goose chase. See you soon. Thanks for watching. So what do my readings tell me? Well, looks like this slot, 10th thou further this way than the other one. That's about a quarter of a millimeter. The problem is I've only got one fifth of that amount to take off to bring my slots into tolerance. Just let me check the other side because my gauge block sets are not identical. Okay, same story. Hmm. It seems like each individual slot is quite nicely parallel to the table, but they're not in line with each other. A 10 thou error, I wonder how they did that. You'd think if you just run a mill straight across, you wouldn't get that error. I guess they didn't go through the middle there because that boss, boss is higher. I guess giving the shitty Chinese vice, I can picture four options. The first one would be custom keys. Clean up the slots in line with each other, accept whatever dimension I get, and then manufacture new keys with two widths on them. The width of the slot here, and the 14 millimeters for the table. Shame I don't have a surface grinder. I guess before I do anything radical, I need to break this down. down. Flip the vise over with my slightly undersized gauge blocks in the slots. Maybe there's a burr on my jaw that was causing all that misalignment. Well, that confirms it. The slot machine in the base is misaligned and the misalignment is more than the space I need to mill out to fit those precise stones. So, yeah, what do I do to make the precise keys fit? The second option would be to fill the slot and remachine it. That could either be a cast iron insert, mill the slot out oversize, epoxy in a piece of cast iron, m machine it down and put the slot where it's supposed to be and finally scrape the surface in, or just make it slightly oversized and fill the thing with liquid metal and then machine it. The third option would be to like offset the keys, put the keys on a different slot of the table. 
by that I mean put another slot maybe over here somewhere some the same as this distance here you know does the slot really have to be co-located with the screw holes the fourth thing I can think of would be to uh, fit them to the current slots by that I mean open up these slots by that 5 one hundredth and fix the keys as they are and then but greatly exaggerated just machine off the fixed jaw to compensate so what would you do thanks a lot for watching sorry about the unsatisfactory video this is going to drive our number one fan nico crazy this unfinished business